Hello everyone, I am here to discuss this uh, vaunted Vikings defense this year, which has been uh, a little less than vaunted, I think we could all say. And I think the first thing we kind of have to ask about this whole thing is, has Zimmer gone kind of stale with his play calling or predictable and just was it was it figured out at some point in the playoffs last year and they have yet to adjust? It kind of becomes a concerning question because if that happened and he's yet to adjust, we're probably not going to see an adjustment anytime soon. Which brings me to this other question, which is, is it time to let George Edwards try a game calling plays here or no? Because I think based on Thursday night at least, it can't get much worse than that, can it? I mean, there was a perfect passer rating. We were allowing five yards of carry. It was bad all around. There were missed tackles. There were bad play calls. There were there were mismatches left and right for him, like Anthony Barr covering receivers. I know that one's been a, a fun one to uh, talk about. And speaking of him, that's kind of the next point, which is he's never been... Barr has never been good in pass coverage. We knew that. We knew that getting him. We knew he was kind of this raw pass rusher type. And we're like, oh, cool. That's a pass rusher right there. Or at least kind of like this weird elephant role that have been pretty successful in the past in some schemes. And I thought we might see that. We've yet to see that. Instead, we use him as a true off-the-ball linebacker, which is not what he is. We're kind of wasting his talent by doing this. And why do they still use him that way? It's a little interesting. And that kind of ties into this, which is... Where's George Iloka? This, this feels like Tremaine Brock all over again, where we just sign some people and never use them. Because as far as I know, I don't, I don't remember seeing George Iloka ever on the field with the defense this entire year. I don't know if he's got some special team snaps. I never really looked for it, but I do know. I don't think he's played on the defense this entire regular season. And it's a little concerning based on the fact that Jaron Curse has gotten snaps, you know. So where is Iloka? And how that can tie into Barr is just because in those obvious passing downs, you can use Iloka in the Barr role and put Barr as a pass rusher, which makes sense to, I think, everyone, especially since, you know, Everson is out. And speaking of that, you also can't really replace Everson Griffin with a Deshaun Bauer, Stephen Weatherly, like, rotation. They're just backup NFL players, and that's probably all they will be at the end of this. And, uh... So you either got to use Barr a little bit more creatively in that sense and use what he's good at, which is rushing the passer. And I know some people be like, well, what is he good at because of last game? I think he is a good pass rusher. We just don't use him as a pass rusher for whatever reason. That's a very unknown reason. I've wondered this for years. I don't know why it's taken this long in order for them to realize, oh, hey, this guy, he can, he can do this. We just don't do it very often for whatever reason. And... So that if you're not going to put Barr down there, you have to look at, like, if like if you guys want to look at the outside options, there's only one that sticks out to me, and that's bringing back Brian Robeson. Because if you're talking about, uh, like, I think he might be able to give a little bit more than those other two, at least with just the experience and the knowledge he has. And also, with Everson gone, you need a leader on this defense. Robeson, right there. Now, you either go get him or you use Barr more effectively. I think you have to do one of the two in order to salvage some of this because you need you need that pass rush coming off the edge a little bit more than Weatherly and Bauer can do. And I do understand that some of this freakout is coming from what is probably the best offense in the entire league. I, I do understand that. And I understand they were, you know going up against a pretty good tackle and you know regardless of what side they're on because obviously Andrew Whitworth he's he's good he's very good and then you have Rob Havenstein on the other side who's a pretty decent tackle himself 
and I understand don't worry but at the same time you need to generate these things because if we were to make the playoffs theoretically you're going to see these teams like you might see or we're definitely gonna see Green Bay again but we might if we were to make it we might see them in January we will see the Rams in January we will see Philadelphia in January we like these things kind of stack up and you just if you can't beat these teams now I don't understand how you might beat them in a high pressure situation which is a little concerning based on the fact that we've seen the Zimmer teams kind of crumble in these higher pressure situations we had the 38 to 7 the 5 and 0 start um, even though Blair Walsh wasn't like Zimmer's fault it was still part of his team crumbling at the biggest moment and it's concerning and the other part that is just a disaster is the nickel corner the nickel corner is a mess right now and I think Alexander has talent it's just very clear he's an outside corner Mike Hughes showing his rookiness for uh, this year so far I think he had a very good first game and since then it's been kind of eh. but like I think he will be a good player down the road it's just right now he doesn't help much as he does look kind of confused and lost at times as a rookie might do especially playing the nickel spot which is one of the more complex positions on the entire defense so i th we have seen a little bit of jaron curse in the nickel but this is another spot where i say well where's george iloka if we're using jaron curse we should be able to use iloka as i'm pretty sure we all know iloka's probably better than jaron curse we've seen jaron curse before he is not the best player and i would have more faith in george iloka to cover and tackle a whole lot better than jaron curse does either of those things and the other player i would think you might be able to use in that nickel spot is harrison smith which and then you can put iloka up at top which is the benefit of having three pretty good safeties i would argue four with anthony harris and it's confusing to me why he's never on the field and it's just it's disappointing and i think the other thing we can say about this whole nickel corner situation terrence newman is very very dearly missed he that was an underrated player even though he was you know obviously he was slow and sometimes that would show up because you know he was like 40 but you start to see it now of why he was on the field and you got to fix this somehow whether it's with the safety like Iloka or Smith and put the other one up top when that's happening like because you can use Iloka in so many different ways and I'm really surprised it hasn't happened yet and the last thing I actually want to go over which is can this cost Zimmer a job potentially at the end of the year if this never go, you know, gets better? And I know that might be a little bit of an overreaction to some people that you know you can't base this off of like pretty much what has been three games now for the most part. And I understand that, but if it does continue, I think it can. And by continue, I mean over the next five to six weeks even uh, like because if we miss the playoffs this is not a team that was expected to be oh no it's just we're looking for signs of improvement no this is a team that was expecting to be in the super bowl potentially which is not good if you don't even make the playoffs if you look like you're on track to not make it you might end up seeing zimmer get fired earlier than you, anyone would think which coming into the season would be unheard of like you would be like no but based on the fact that strength is now weakness right now uh, uh this is bad this is bad and if you do remember after 2016 after the 5-0 and collapse he was kind of on the hot seat a little bit and this is another one of those things where it's like you had expectations you had pressure what do the zimmer teams do they don't always get back up and 
if they continue just to fall over like this, this is not something we can win with. We will be settling for mediocrity at best if that continues to be a trend. And that's kind of concerning. <laughs> so I don't know if, if that did happen, if Filippo would be the guy, but just this entire thing, like I don't, you generally don't learn how to cover and tackle again within a week, which is also bad because, you know, we it's not like we get a little uh, break like we might want right now in terms of either a bye week or just an easier team, I guess, to go against than Philly, even though we get the 10 days. It's just generally that doesn't happen, but we need to see signs of improvement or else the season could be kind of a lost cause already, which is not something I expected to say after this because I kind of thought at this point we'd be at least two and two. We are one, two and one. <laughs> so even though it's the same amount of losses, we kind of needed that win just because of the NFC competitiveness in this. And now yeah, I would like to know what you guys think about just the, uh, I guess, the confusion that is this Vikings defense debacle. And uh, so leave those down in the comments below. And until next time, I bid you adieu.